Hello there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to give you an update on this filter. This is a stainless steel shower filter that I got from Global Koi, based out of the Midlands in the UK. This has been running for approximately two months, so I thought I might as well do an update on it and show you how it's going. And yes, you can see behind, it hasn't cleared the pond. The pond is massive, far too big for this filter. But after I'd finished filming, I thought I might as well just leave it set up and keep it running and see how it goes. I think the pond has cleared a little bit, but you can be the judge of that. That might just be down to natural causes though, because as I say, this is far too small for my pond, as you'll see in a moment. There's our little filter, and there's our big pond. It hasn't got a cat in hell's chance of filtering that. But that said, Look how clear the water is. Obviously it's still got some sediment in it because it is a clear line pond, but you can see those pipes under the water. That's a lot clearer than it normally is. The only thing that's different is that filter. That's all that's been added or done to the pond. So that's the only difference from this time last year. Coincidence? That's the pond behind me, approximately 30 yards long by about 26 yards wide and roughly 20 feet or 6 meters deep. It holds a lot of water. At the moment we've got one or two carp left because the otter has been pounding those over the last few years. I haven't stocked carp for probably about five years but there is still one or two in. Mostly crucian carp, which you'll see in an upcoming video if they get caught by somebody who's going to fish my pond. We've also got a few tension here, there's a lot of gudgeon, there's rud, and a few golden orf as well. And I think there's one rainbow trout left, and that's a big fella. It'll be, you know, two foot, maybe it's a little bit more. And it must weigh five or six pound in weight, which is about two and a half kilos to three kilos maybe. It's a big fish. So in this video I'm basically going to talk about any teething problems that I've had with this filter. The positives, the negatives and how I think it's performing. Now when I set this up I only put a coarse foam on here just so you could see the idea of how it would work. You'd generally have a coarse foam and then a medium and then a fine and then your media. But I just left it as it was. I didn't bother changing it. To be set up properly I just left it as it was so consequently we've got a bit of muck getting through to the media but the media still seems pretty porous still a lot of holes evident in it so it hasn't clogged up which is very very good and it's been running as I say for a couple of months one thing I have noticed with this filter is that every few days because it's just pumping straight from the bottom of the pond where there's a lot of pine needles and muck these holes get blocked so every other day, or every three days, or thereabouts, I clean them out with a brush. And that keeps them clear. It basically just dislodges the muck into here to be caught in the foam. And with regard to these holes here, you may or may not notice that there's actually more holes drilled in here than there was when I did the first video on this filter. I found that it didn't have enough holes in, so I drilled some more. It's a very, very easy job to do. I may even drill more than what's in here, and then it'll go longer before it needs cleaning. Now the ideal scenario would be to have one of these shower filters after something like a Nexus, which would basically do the first stage of the nitrogen cycle, which is convert ammonia to nitrite and nitrite to nitrate. It would then be pumped into here, and this would convert nitrate into soluble nitrogen, which would ensure that your fish grow bigger and are healthier. I'm really at a loss to explain why a lot of these moving bed filters that are available nowadays don't come with some sort of integrated shower filter, because it would make perfect sense. Only half the job is being done by them. But if you have a shower filter with suitable media, which will support anaerobic as well as aerobic bacteria you can convert the nitrate as well so you get the full cycle of filtration I'm sure the first company to actually bring out a filter that will do the full cycle will clean up but so far 
nobody is listening. So it's a two-part process. A lot of the guys in the UK are using the Nexus filters. Stick one of these after it and you'll complete the cycle. It's that simple, you know? Now, as you saw in the previous video, this spray bar is not fixed. It just rests on top of here. That has not been an issue. It's never budged at all. So there's no real need to fix this on with any sort of bracket or anything. Now over the last few weeks I've noticed there's a hell of a lot of fly larvae developing inside the filter, most notably underneath the foams. I'm going to show you that now and I thought that was Chironomid midge larvae which is like a non-biting midgey, but it's actually a little fly, a very full bodied fat fly that don't bite, you know we're not bothered by flies biting us around here. Now those larvae and the flies are obviously quite tasty for the fish because if I come out in the night and shine the lamp where this pours back into the pond I can generally see the big rainbow trout just sitting there in the current. It's obviously sitting there for a reason and that reason is food. This is providing food for the fish. Okay, here's an example of what I mean. See that heaving mass of larvae there? That's all fly larvae. Look at that. Absolutely wonderful food for the fish. I mean, if I was fishing the pond, I would just flick that in as ground bait. I'm not sure if you can see, but we've actually got one of those flies hatching out here. That's it, just wandering around there. And there's the one just landed next to it. It's obviously in a fairly manky state there. Oh, there's another one. Just here. They hatch out really, really quickly. There you go. Just on the end of my finger there. I've got really fat little bodies. They're great food for the fish. We've also got that larvae developing in the various trays of the filter as well. You can see them all clinging to the rock there. So they're obviously eating organic matter from the water. They're also in the very, very fine muck that's developing in the bottom of the filter. Hopefully you'll be able to see from this angle that the water is actually reasonably clear around the edges. You can see part way underneath the water and it's generally not that clear in the summer so I'm quite pleased with that now whether or not that has anything to do with the filter is very much open to debate but it does seem as if the water in the pond is clearing a little tiny bit and having that running on the pond certainly can't do any harm it's definitely feeding the fish sounds nice area in the water and it's helping filter the water as well as far as the ammonia nitrite and nitrate goes although I think with the amount of plants that I've got in, in and around the pond I don't think those pollutants are going to be an issue here so there you go really it's still working very very well and with a few more holes drilled in the spray bar it's still covering all the media very very well you can see there the water really is being spread very very well across all the media in all the trays it's not spraying over the side as long as I keep those holes clear and all in all I'm still very very pleased with it just as a reminder there's a hundred kilos well, at least a hundred kilos of 30 to 50 mil pumice in here I used the pumice because I had about half a ton of it it's a lot cheaper than the bio home but in the right situation, i.e. if this was after a nexus where the water would be really, really clear, the biohome would be the logical choice. It's a better media than the pumice. It's going to be very expensive to set one of these up with biohome, but it's going to do an absolutely cracking job if it's operating in clean water. There are, of course, other medias. The Backy House media is also very, very expensive and very popular. Or you could put alpha grog in here. Basically, you want something with a good surface area that has a chance of supporting aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Generally, the more you spend, the more you get. But with regard to the alpha grog and the pumice, they aren't very expensive. And for what you pay, you get a lot. You do get more with the backy house and the bio home. But you will pay for it. I'll put the link to Global Koi in the video description. So check that out, they can make these fellas to order, any size you want. I've just been moving some stuff where I'm going to build a, a big cabin to work from and I found a couple of pipes that I've totally forgotten about, so I'm going to use them in the pond. 
uh, for the fish to either mess about in or to take refuge in. First one, it's very wide but it's not very long so it's not really much of a refuge but they might want to swim through that. And I've wrapped galvanised wire around it and tied a breeze block on the bottom because this tube is slightly buoyant and I don't want it to float. I want this to be right down the bottom of the pond. And by using the heavy breeze block on the bottom, I'll achieve that goal of getting this right down the bottom of the pond. It's somewhere between 15 and 20 foot deep in the middle of here. So this is going to be well down. And I'm going to place it in gently. I'm going to have to go out in the boat and scoop that out. I think I'm probably going to have the same problem with this big lad as well. This is my bigger tube. It's not as wide as the other one, but it's much, much longer. This is going to be an excellent refuge for my fish. And because that other one's floating away down there, just behind me, I'm actually going to put holes in the top of here. I'm going to puncture holes in the top of here. Hopefully the air that's inside here will just rush out. I don't need to add more weight, I just need to let the air out. That should be perfect. Right, hopefully this one will work. I don't fancy going out in the boat to retrieve this. Well, I had to do quite a lot of stabbing all the way around the outsides there, but that's let all the air out. And now the tubes are on the bottom, which is what I intended to do in the first place. Took the long road to get there, but it's done. <laughs> 